I could also replace it with a binomial, like we see here. If p of x is equal to 4x squared minus 6x plus 1, if I want a simplified expression for p of x minus 3, then I'm going to replace every x with x minus 3. So step one, I'm going to say p of x minus 3 is equal to 4x minus 3 squared minus 6x minus 3 plus 1. Now, be careful when you're squaring the first part, because remember, it's not just x squared and negative 3 squared. It's going to be x minus 3 times x minus 3, so you're actually going to have to foil it out. I'm going to get x squared minus 6x plus 9 when I multiply everything out. Or if you want the simplified form, or a simplified way to uh, square a binomial, square the first term, that's going to be the first part. Square the last term is going to be the last part. And the first term times the second term, or the x times negative 3 times 2, that's going to give you your middle number. Minus 6x plus 18 and plus 1. Then I'm going to multiply the 4 into all parts here. 4x squared minus 24x plus 36. And then I have negative 6x, and the 18 and the 1 are going to make plus 19. And then I combine the like terms. Well, there is no other x squared, so this is going to be 4x squared. When I have the negative 24x and the negative 6x, I have negative 30x. And the 36 and the 19 are going to give me plus 55. And there's my simplified form of that. If I consider the function f of x is equal to 10x minus 3, determine the x value if f of x is equal to 47. Well, this means that I'm replacing all of the f of x, the whole left-hand side, with 47, and I'm actually solving for x in this case. So I'm going to say that 47 is equal to 10x minus 3. Then I'm going to isolate x. So if I have the constant of negative 3 on the left hand or on the right hand side, I'm going to add 3 to both sides to get rid of this negative 3 here. And I'm going to say that 50 is equal to 10x. And then I just divide both sides by 10 to isolate x. And x is going to equal 5. If it wants me to solve the equation, f of x is equal to negative 23. It's just a different way of writing the same thing we had before. It just means solve for x. So I'm going to say that negative 23 is equal to 10x minus 3. And then I'm going to add 3 to both sides just like we did last time. Negative 20 is equal to 10x. And then divide both sides by 10. And x is going to equal negative Okay, for the last examples, if our equation is f of x is equal to x squared minus 5, where x can be any real number, the first part, same as we've done for the other practice examples, we're replacing x to solve for what the f of x to the y would be. So if f of 4 is equal to 4 squared minus 5, then that means that f of 4 is going to equal to 16 minus 5. f of 4 is going to give me 11. If I'm solving the equation f of x is equal to 4, then I'm going to say that 4 is equal to x squared minus 5. I'm going to add 5 to both sides to isolate the x. And I'm going to say 9 is equal to x squared. And now, because I know that 
x squared can be any real number and it can be positive or negative. When I'm taking the square root, I know that I could get 9 by saying 3 times 3 or negative 3 times negative 3. So when I'm solving for x, if x is squared, then I need to say that it's going to be the positive or negative square root of 9 is equal to x. x can either be positive 3 or negative 3. If I'm solving the equation f of t is equal to 75, where t is greater than 0, well, the first thing is I've replaced my variable, so now I'm going to say f of t is equal to t squared minus 5. Then I can say that I'm replacing f of t, so that's going to be 75 is equal to t squared minus 5, or 80 is equal to t squared. Because it's not saying any real number now, it only wants when it's greater than 0, I'm only going to take the positive square root of this, which means that t is going to equal the positive square root of 80, and then I'm going to simplify this radical like what we did in the last unit. I can factor it down and say that 80 is going to become 2 and 40, 2 and 20, 2 and 10, 2 and 5. I'm looking for pairs of 2 of the same number. And I have two 2's. And then I have a 5 that does not have a pair that's going to have to stay inside the radical, which means that I can say that this is going to equal 2 times 2. One of these 2's makes it out, one of these 2's makes it out, and the square root of the 5 has to stay inside, and I get 4 root 5 is going to be my simplified form. Okay, try some practice. Let me know if you have any questions.